computer sh sh that f Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. Sorry for this wannabe funny introduction here at the start. I think anyone who doesn't have an ultra powerful computer had this problem at least once um, by working in Ableton. We are talking about the CPU overload. At the top right here in Ableton you can see a little CPU meter. The higher a value is displayed here, the more Ableton uses the computing power. Excessive CPU usage in life can cause audio dropouts, clicks or slow response. I will show you 10 tips how you can handle your CPU in Ableton. So let's go! If you're working on a project and you notice CPU problem, I recommend that you first close all the programs that you don't need. And by opening the activity monitor on Mac or the task manager on Windows, you can see which program needs a lot of computing power. So let's do this directly. Okay, as we can see, I have Final Cut here, I have also Photoshop here, and I don't need this by working here on a song. So let's close Photoshop and let's also close Final Cut. All right, okay. As next we are going to increase the puffer size and you can find the puffer size settings by opening live preferences and then here on audio on latency you can see the puffer size and now the, the puffer size is really really low so I recommend to increase this puffer size maybe by 128 let's see how this sounds okay. Much better, you can hear that you have no problems anymore. Note that by increasing the puffer size, you will also increase the audio latency. So keep that in mind when you would like to play a melody on a keyboard or something like that. All right, let's go to tip number three. Instead of applying a CPU intensive effect to all of the individual tracks, it is advisable to applying the effect to a return track. Let me quickly do this. You can open here a new return track and adding a reverb to this return track here. All right. And now you can easily add reverb to all the tracks you want without adding a reverb to every individual track. So let me quickly show this to you. Like this you're going to save a lot of computing power because special effects like reverb, echoes, delay are very CPU intensive. Many plugins nowadays offer an echo mode. For example this reverb here from Ableton you can switch from high to echo. Or also this compressor here from Hoover you have here a high quality button and on turning on this high quality button of course it's harder for your computer to handle this. Um, check carefully your plugins because there are really a lot nowadays that have this, um, these high quality buttons here and when you're currently not working on a track you can disable the high quality modus and change into the, in the, in the, into the echo modus and like this you are also saving a bit of CPU don't forget before exporting the track to reactivate all of the high quality knobs. And here we go with another little CPU saver. If you're using a lot of internal Ableton effects like this equalizer here, so close the visual, we don't need them anymore. For example, if I'm playing here, you can see the analyzer activated on this equalizer, but I actually don't need this analyzer anymore because I already did what I have to do on this equalizer. So I'm going to fold this effect by double clicking on it. A next good way to save CPU is to disable the high quality mode in the audio clips. Here on the sample box you can see this button here, this high quality button, and by disabling this high quality button 
you will save a bit of power. This setting here, a lot of people don't know it, improves the sample grade conversation as soon as audio files are transposed, but at the cost of higher CPU load, obviously. So if you have any problems with the CPU, make sure to disable the high quality knob on all your samples. And also here important, before exporting the track, go back to them and reactivate the high quality mode. This is really important. This trick here, I'm using it a lot on Ableton. For example, I have this drum group here with some hats. I would like to clean up the low end and instead of adding an equalizer to every single track, I make a group, add this equalizer to the group and so I can clean the low end for all the tracks with one equalizer. Of course it also saves you a lot of time because you don't need to add the, the equalizer on all the single tracks and make the low cut on it. If you use virtual instruments that cause high CPU like Serum, Diva or also the plugins from Acoustica Audio or the contact library, you can freeze the corresponding track. Let me quickly show you how you can do this. You press on the corresponding track, make a right click and select here freeze. If you need it again, to change the melody or something like that, you just can do a right click again and select here unfreeze the track. After you have freeze the track, it's also possible to flatten the track again with the right click. You can select here flatten, then it's going to convert the MIDI track into an audio file or to export a MIDI track into an audio track. But before doing this, I highly recommend to save this MIDI track in your user library because otherwise, once it's flattened, you can't go back to your MIDI track. So let's go with tip number 9. If the project is really really large, it can also be advisable to export entire parts of the project and save this part in your user library. Let me quickly show you how. For example, if I'm happy with drum, kick and, and bass, I can select them, press command G to make a group and now I'm going to take this group and add it in my user library. Let's rename it with rest one for example. Now I'm going to solo this group and I'm going to export it. All right, once exported, we can delete this group here and add exported part. Let's see if we can find it quickly. Here, rest one. All right. And now you can see the CPU is really, really low. And once you have done what you need to do, you can delete this exported part here, go back and add the rest again. So you're able to make changes here if needed. It is of course not the most pleasant way, but it can be quite helpful, especially when you have a really large project and you can't handle it in another way. As I said before, be sure to save the parts that you're going to delete and export. This is really, really important. Otherwise, you can't do any changes. If everything fails, there is probably no way around and you have to buy a new computer or at least update your current computer. In my opinion, it's worth to spend also a lot of money on a computer. Don't forget the computer nowadays is the basic of your studio. You are doing 99% of your music through the computer. So maybe it's better to save the money and don't buy another compressor that you probably don't really need and spend that money maybe better on a good computer. Okay, I hope it helps and I hope you can solve your CPU problem with these tips. Please let me know down in the comment if you have any questions. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and thanks a lot for watching. See you next time.